I've got 12.59. I need to wait one more minute here, Coach. Fair hey, can't. Can I got on real quick? Can I get a permission to record? Yeah. Sorry. Could I Thank get that you. as well? I got on late. Okay. Got both of you guys. Brett's normally so fast. He's like the Wrigley Field ball strikes guy. I can't I can't beat him to the to the permission punch. All right, coach, it's one o'clock. Thanks for joining us today. We'll go ahead and uh, lead off with your uh, comments and then we'll open up for questions. Thank you. Nothing like rivalry week. Uh, no matter what level of football you play, uh, there is a team uh, that you want to beat a little bit more than everybody else. Uh, that's definitely the case this week. Um, as we finish up against Iowa, um, if you watch the video, I mean, we saw what happened during the time. We had a big lead, didn't finish the way we would like to. Uh, we see. Uh, things in our program that we're doing that will eventually get us over the hump though. We're gaining, but we gotta be able to finish it. Um, perfect time this week to do that. Uh, from the Iowa game, we had some injuries. Uh, we have a little bit of time before we play. Hopefully we'll get most of those guys back. I'll talk on injuries a little bit later on in the week. Uh, Land of Lincoln trophy, of course, is, is up. It's been up north for too long. Um, our guys will be pumped up and ready to go, and uh, we plan on playing our best game we played all year. Take your questions. Okay, Jim Cotter, you're leading off. Colin on deck, Scott Beatty in the hole. So go ahead, Jim. Good afternoon, Lovey. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I know you talked about uh, the rivalry game with Northwestern. You've got a lot of Illinois guys on the team that probably want to see that trophy head back south. Just what go you know what have you, you know, talked about to the guys about you know wanting to get that trophy back and just what does this game mean to you uh, personally well we uh we talked about the rivalry this morning but i think if you're in football and you've been in football for a period of time you understand what that means um everybody to a man if you ask a college player hey in high school who was your rival how did you do against your rival they can spit out those stats pretty quick so this is important. Um, and for us, of course, Northwestern has five wins. We have two wins. Just for us to get our third win. I think there's uh, four teams with over uh, three wins in the Big Ten Conference right now. So we have a chance to get that third win. That's pretty important to us. Thank you, Lovey. You're welcome. All right, Colin, you're up. Scott Beatty on deck. Go ahead, Colin. Well, you know, you mentioned at the end of the, the Iowa game that Mike Epstein, you expect him to be available for the Northwestern game. Uh, first of all, is that still the case? That is still the case. We haven't um, we haven't been on the field since I talked with you, but that is the case. Nothing has changed. OK, now, uh, obviously, you'd like to get him back in the offense, I would assume. But uh, with that said, uh, do you uh, do you plan to try and utilize Isaiah Williams any additionally this week? Or do you uh, have you liked the way you guys have used him throughout the last couple of games since Brandon got back? You know, I, I like to go over our game plan with you, but I know you can understand why I can't really talk about that. I mean, we're going to do everything we possibly can to win. Uh, there's a place for Isaiah. He gave us a spark the other day. I said that after the game. Um, we'll kind of see how it goes. We're game planning and deciding exactly what we'll be doing. But um, show up Saturday, you'll see. And then I know you said you'd address injuries later this week. So I'll kind of pivot the, this question to ask about those guys who ended up kind of filling in for the guys who were injured on the defensive side of the ball, guys like Michael Marquez and Kendall Smith. Uh, how did you feel? I, I know you said... Uh, things didn't go well. People didn't exactly step up in some spots. How did you feel about the way those guys filled in? Well, I, you know, there's a lot of us that's had a lot of opportunities that didn't play as well. And I expected more from myself and a lot of others. But um, but for the Mike Mark cases, the Kendall Smith, uh, I thought they, they stepped up and allowed us to com continue to compete. Uh, you know, Michael Marquez's situation, I mean, Mike has walked on for us and has given us a lot of good play throughout. Kendall Smith has played a lot of different positions. We had Bryce Barnes that stepped up. You know, when you get later into the season and injuries hit you and other things, um, there's opportunities for guys to show us who they are. And uh, that's what we got. 
we may have to call up on some of those guys this week. We'll see. Thanks, Lovey. You're welcome. Okay, hey, Scott Beatty and then Jeremy Warner on deck. Go ahead, Scott. Good afternoon, Lovey. Uh, Northwestern continues to be a team that hangs their hat on defense, of course, but they made a switch at OC for this year. What have you noticed about what's different for them compared to last year offensively? Well, uh, I, I do know their offensive coordinator uh, personally for a long period of time. He was on my staff when I was up north. Mike Bajakin is an outstanding coach. Uh, two to other quarterbacks. He's also my quarterback coach down in Tampa. Uh, what we've seen is uh, a lot of things are similar, though. I mean, a lot of college offenses uh, are similar as far as, you know, some of the read option uh, concepts. But we see a little twist of NFL, too, from Mike's background, uh, third down, just in general running the football. But what we're going to see is a multiple offensive attack. Uh, Rand has is, is played good football in our conference, knows the conference well, to make a lot of uh, bad decisions. Uh, they, that's what they've done. They've protected the football and, um, and haven't beaten themselves. And playing the way their defense is playing right now kind of allows them to do that. And then uh, similar to Iowa, do you feel like Northwestern is sort of a, a, known, a known quantity because of how they've uh, excelled over the years? Explain yourself a known quantity. I'm, uh, you kind of know what you're getting with them uh, schematically and all that. Well, I, I think you can say that about everybody in the Big Ten, most college teams. I don't. I think they all have an identity on what they would like to do. We have the same. Everybody we played this year is kind of like that. Um, Northwood, when you change coordinators, though, there is there are new ideas that come in offensively. But, yeah, we know what who we're going to go against. Uh, defensively, that staff has been in place for a long period of time. Uh, there's not a whole lot of surprises, though, as you get in the games, especially within the conference. Thanks, Levy. You're welcome. Okay, Jeremy, you're up. Bob Ospos and on deck. Go ahead, Jeremy. Good afternoon, Levy. Uh, I know you guys had a big breakthrough, you know, ending a streak against Nebraska. You had some of those last year with Wisconsin, Michigan State. How important is it for you guys to, to win a game against a team like Northwestern? You haven't won in a while, uh, especially with the rivalry. Oh, it's important, you know, just talking about the rivalry game within itself. I mean, that's enough for you to really want to win in the worst way. But um, we we do keep track. Everybody keeps track of who has won. This rivalry goes back a long period of time. Uh, the trophy that we're getting has changed names. Uh, but for us, five years is too long. Um, we have ended some streaks, and we're looking to end another one this weekend. And then you said, you know, we're gaining in this program. What are the biggest gains you've seen um, this season, especially? Oh, I think if you just look at us play, without me going into stats, records, and all that, you just look in, if you look at our play, we have legitimate, we have a legitimate chance to win each week. Now, that hasn't always been the case. Uh, we had a legitimate chance to beat a good Iowa football team this past week. We're better in all areas. Uh, I think anybody that's watching football that knows football will say that. Thank you, Evan. You're welcome. All right, Bob, you're up. Matt Stevens on deck. Coach, I understand your attention is on the rest of this, this season, but looking forward, how important would it be to get Doug Kramer back with this team in 2021? Well, Bob, you say Doug. There are a lot. We have quite a few players in that situation that are very good players that. Exactly. Went through senior exercises uh, this past Saturday. In particular, Doug, would love to have Doug Kramer play for the University of Illinois as long as he can play. I'm gonna say that about quite a few of our other players too. But right now, as you mentioned, there's bigger things. What we need to do for the Doug Kramers of the world is get them a win against the rival up north. And that does mean an awful lot. We have so many Illinois guys. And it's talking about the offensive line is in it all Illinois offensive line. There's a, re, a lot of reasons for us to want to win this week. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Okay, Matt Stevens, uh, you're up. Josh on deck. Lovey, quick. Obviously, yes or no is is the plan to start Brandon again. Has that plan changed at all in your mind this weekend? Uh, you know, maybe I should answer it this way. 
well, how do you think I'm going to answer that question? I have an idea. I just kind of, so I'm just I, I needed to why, ask. I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering why. I thought we know each other a little bit better than that. We've been hanging out for quite a few weeks. Uh, but we know what we're going to do at the quarterback position. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about it right now like no one else does. And uh, can't wait to put that on display this Saturday up in Evanston. How's that? The only other question I have is about your linebacker position, which, if I'm mistaken, had three scholarship healthy guys at the end of the game on Saturday. How dire is that position? Or do you feel like that there's guys that can step up and make significant contributions that may have not had the opportunity yet? Well, the I think it's just facts on what you said about the scholarship players that we had up. I mean, we, we've lost some good football players. Uh, with, with serious injuries, with some injuries that have kept them out. But with that being said, there is an opportunity for other guys to step up. Uh, we finished the game with linebackers uh, on the field this past week. We're going to play the game with linebackers this week. Uh, we'll see through the week exactly who will be uh, ready to go. A lot of faith in Coach Miles to get the guys ready to go. Thank you, Lovey. You're welcome. Okay, Josh, you're up. And then uh, Robert Rosenthal, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you uh, real quick about Vidarian Lowe, Doug Kramer, and Paucho, three guys that have been contributing really since their, uh, their freshman years here. Since they were freshmen, how have uh, their improvements really been able to contribute to the success that this team has been able to reach? It would be hard to just answer that in a, with, with a simple answer. I'll try. Um, you know, when you get on campus, I mean, you kind of see guys and, you know, they're not fully developed. And uh, the perfect, you know, what you would like to see is just them develop and everybody see it happening right before your eyes. You just want to see guys come here and, and just be great in a classroom. In every situation that comes up, you want the guys to just check, you want to check the box off on them doing it the right way. Uh, that's exactly what, what we've gotten from those players that you mentioned. Uh, they just seem like, you know, it is a coach's dream. Uh, and then me personally, you know, being a head coach and spend a lot of time on the defensive side, but I love being around them. Just count on them, have confidence in them. So we can talk an awful lot. Uh, they show up every day and they know what I'm going to say. They know the message to take to the rest of the team. I probably should stop talking about those guys right now, but, uh, that's what we're talking about. That's why our program is changing based on guys like them. Thanks, Coach. Well. Okay, Robert, you're up. And Joey, after that. Yeah, Coach, I, I'm just curious your thoughts. Um, Nick Saban made that statement about defense and offense this year, and he's been asked about it and expounded on it. But I'll just read you his quote. It used to be that good defense beats good offense. Good defense just doesn't beat good offense anymore. Uh, and that's his view of college football. As a defensive guy, I'm just curious of your views on that. Oh, I think eventually the two – I think you've always needed good offenses. I mean, you can have great defenses, but you win games based on scoring. Um, offenses are putting up more points, putting up more, more yards. I think the, the game is kind of skewed a little bit, maybe more for offenses to have a little bit more success, but – I think every championship football team that you see, college, high school, junior high, Pop Warner, uh, that team is playing because they're scoring points. But I would say that they're playing good defense too. So I think you still need good defense uh, to win and become a championship team. And the champion this year, they're going to score points, but I'm going to say that they're going to play good defense also. He further clarified that statement a few weeks ago that the secondary is the hardest to coach these days just because of the complex passing schemes and such. Would you agree that scheming for secondary is the most difficult? I would say that scheming for the secondary has always been very difficult. I would say that uh, playing position-wise for a cornerback to back be backpedaling and guarding uh, arguably the best uh, one of the best players on the team is tough dude it's always been that way uh, most people would argue a little bit it's hard playing defensive line too but I say cornerback is one of the toughest positions to play in football period okay thanks well okay Joey you're up 
Hey, Lovey, after going back and watching film and the conversations you guys had, are there any certain things you can point to that would help finish games or, or really get over that hump? No, I, don't, I, I think, you know, if it was, it's just not that quite you know, that simple to just say one thing. There's a lot of things that go into it. Each game is different. Uh, there are plays that there comes a crunch time when you don't make a play. Uh, that could send the game in one direction or another. And that was the case the other day. Uh, we had a fourth and three, up 14 points. We could have gotten off the field. They convert. They scored a touchdown pass after that. Offensively, you're going to look at, you know, after we had that 14-point lead to, you know, get one more drive. Uh, so I think there's a – I think every phase, special teams also, you can point to a play. It's like that in most games. And uh, don't know when it's going to come. We're just going to keep working to try – not let it happen again. Thanks, Lovey. You're welcome. All right, Coach. That is uh, all the questions that we have for you today. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. See y'all later.